So I ran into my ex this weekend, which was kind of triggering for me. And I didn't think that it was going to be not even triggering in terms of like, oh my God, I have so much anxiety. I'm so depressed, blah, 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 blah. I think it just made me realize that I haven't really thought a lot about my relationship since I've gotten out of it, just because I feel like the relationship already felt like it was over long before it ended. So because I didn't feel these feelings of like heartbreak, I felt like I wasn't having to heal from coming out of my relationship. But in reality, I think getting out of a long-term relationship, having any kind of major change in your life where you are very much used to something and then it's not there anymore is going to require healing. It is pretty traumatic. And so I was supposed to work and edit and like upload a video today, but I've honestly just been spending today kind of reflecting and really just like looking at how I'm feeling, where I'm at. It's also a full moon right now. So I feel like that's probably adding to me really feeling like I need to sit down for a second. And again, just assess how I'm feeling. Also not really felt the need to talk about it on my channel. I just haven't felt called to do that yet. But honestly, sharing my journey literally with anything is very therapeutic. It actually helps me in my healing slash reflecting process with anything in my life. So I thought today would be a good day to kind of take you guys along with me as we sit down and talk about healing from a breakup. First things first, um, I'm starving. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm kind of like shaky because I haven't eaten yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting ready here. I need to like do my skin and brush my lashes and get myself together a little bit. And then we are gonna eat something and then we'll sit down and chat. Okay, so I just spent some time journaling and really reflecting on some things that I feel like I've been learning recently. I feel like partially why ending a relationship or just going through a breakup in general is really hard is because honestly, like in any relationship, but especially in long-term romantic relationships, when you meet people or when you first kind of get to know someone, they know you as the version of yourself that you are at that in that moment. And oftentimes people will hold on to whatever version of you benefits them the most because that's just what we do as human beings. We hold on to what feels comfortable to us. And so in a relationship, especially again, dating young, it can be very challenging because as you grow and learn and discard old versions of yourself, the person that you're with may not fully like that version of you or understand that if that makes sense and so i feel like really what we have to do once we get out of any relationship is we have to really take a look at what core beliefs we have about ourselves about the world that we no longer feel aligned with because i think really the point in healing whether that be again from a relationship slash breakup or even you know capitalist conditioning which we talk about a lot on this channel i think healing the whole point is really coming back to yourself and what what you truly believe about yourself and who you truly are when you really are truly present with who you are in this moment stripping away all the conditioning stripping away all the you know, projections of other people, the projections of society. Once you really strip that down and look at who you are, I think that's when you can really learn to love yourself deeply and fully. So that all to say, I've been spending some time just journaling and again, just looking at like the things that I no longer believe in. And I just, I honestly just wrote this as like a column. So I did one page for things I no longer believe in. And then I did another page where I could just write right next to that, like, what I actually do believe. So again, it's really just a practice of looking at like what negative core beliefs I'm carrying around and then what I wanna replace them with. So for example, under things I no longer believe in, I wrote emotion slash passion must be sacrificed for the sake of commitment. This is something that I definitely feel like I held on to for a long time in my relationship. A lot of times we stay in relationships way longer past their expiration date because we feel the need to you know, be in them to say that we stayed. And that again applies to friendships as well. So for me, as I've been healing from this breakup, I've had to really take a look at my views on commitment and even like marriage. Because again, I feel like people don't have to be in our lives forever and people can truly be in your life for a season. And so I've really had to let go of that shame and guilt around letting go of a relationship once that 
relationship is no longer serving me. So what I really want to replace that negative core belief with is the idea that emotions slash feelings are important. Again, how you feel about something intuitively is important. Your body is like your inner guide. So anytime you don't feel aligned to something, and usually you know when that is, when you really listen to your gut and learn to trust yourself and trust your intuition, when you don't feel aligned to something, it's just not meant for you. And I feel like when you when you can learn to let things go, and again, this applies to everything, not just relationships, the sooner you can learn to, again, trust yourself and let things go, um, the sooner, again, you you come back to yourself and who you really are. So yeah, those are just a few things I've been learning and kind of journaling about. It's a process, y'all. It's a journey. This is stuff that I've been reflecting on now for weeks and, well, months, actually. But um, I feel like putting this like pen to paper is so, so helpful in me kind of fully letting go and again, replacing those negative core beliefs. Like I said, it's a full moon um, and I feel like I'm kind of just, I don't know, my energy just feels like it's kind of shifting. So I really want my apartment to also reflect that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just deep clean, do some saging, just really clear out all the old energy. And again, just clear out, I don't know. It, I know it sounds a little bit dramatic and silly, but I feel like making a ritual out of literally everything is so important to um, just feeling more embodied and powerful in yourself. So yeah, we're kind of making today into like a ritual. because I was getting some more like realizations. I feel like once we gain this level of self-awareness about our negative core beliefs or like these stories that we tell ourselves that again, we don't feel aligned to, our job then becomes to be able to be present in our day-to-day -day lives and witness when those stories are coming back up and when our way of thinking is rooted in those stories. Because although you may be journaling and recognize that again, you know, you have these negative core beliefs about X, Y, and Z, although you are aware of that, it doesn't mean that you are not it doesn't mean that you are free from those stories automatically. It's a journey, it's a process to again, unlearn because oftentimes these negative core beliefs are driving our behavior subconsciously. There's a lot of times throughout these past few months where I've experienced feelings of like shame and guilt without even fully understanding where they were coming from. And so I feel like, again, our job in this healing journey is to learn how to become aware of them more often, but then be able to also sit with these negative core beliefs so that we can eventually let them go. This is something that does not come easy for us. When we feel any sort of anxiety or just negative emotions, we often get mad at ourselves or we want to run away from them. Doing any kind of shadow work or, again, just sitting with sides of yourself that you don't particularly like is not fun it's almost like having a really shitty roommate who doesn't pay the rent or even worse like a roommate who a roommate who has a boyfriend who's always around who doesn't even pay rent like y'all know what i'm talking about like when someone's always in your space and they don't really belong there they don't clean up after themselves it's very annoying when they're around and it very much frustrates you like you know deep down within you that you have to have an awkward uncomfortable conversation in order for the situation to change that exact feeling is what it's like sitting with negative emotions like the longer we avoid that awkward conversation the longer we avoid actually sitting down with them and addressing them the more we are actually inhibiting our own healing and so i've really noticed for me on this journey of healing from my breakup i've had to fully allow myself to again sit with whatever negative emotions are coming up for me instead of trying to run from them and learning to be uncomfortable learning to be able to do that is a practice in itself it's something that takes time look at the lighting Ooh, my skin and so some ways that i've really been able to kind of do this is through things like connecting with my body so like movement 
yoga, weightlifting, for me just doing anything that connects me with my body is one way that I'm very much able to feel comfortable being present in whatever negative emotions I may be experiencing. Also, breath work has been huge, like so huge for me in this journey. I do have anxiety and there's moments where maybe I'm crying or I just feel very overwhelmed. And typically what I've found that's been really helpful for me is connecting with my breath and learning to breathe deeply so that I can then feel safe to sit with my thoughts. And for me, I've been really, really enjoying doing guided breath work sessions because I feel like, again, for me, whenever I'm very anxious or overwhelmed, sometimes hearing someone else's voice, especially a woman's voice, is very, very soothing for me. And so I've really been enjoying using the Aura app for this. And they're actually the sponsor of today's video. So shout out to them. Aura, if you guys have never heard of them, is a mindfulness and sleep app. So they have thousands of meditations, stories, guides, breathwork sessions. They just have such a wide variety of content that you can use to help you connect with yourself, be present, and even sleep if you need help with sleep. All their content is made by hundreds of coaches and therapists from around the world, and they're actually used by over 7 million people. They've won the Best of Apple Award. award. And for me, what I like about Aura specifically is that it's very much personalized to you. The app, when you're setting it up, will ask you some questions. It learns what it is that you're looking for, and also just the way the app to set up like the interface just makes it very easy for you to find exactly what it is that you need in a given moment so for me again whenever i'm feeling very overwhelmed or anxious or just like not able to sit with whatever negative emotions are coming up for me i found some very very impactful breath work sessions that have really been able to calm me relax me and again get me into a state where i'm able just to kind of be more aware and more present with my body and with my emotions so yeah i highly recommend aura if you guys are looking for a good tool to kind of help you connect back to yourself and just be more grounded i'll be sure to leave a link to them down below the first 500 people to click the link will actually get a free trial with them along the 25% off discount so be sure to take advantage of that while it lasts and yeah thank you again to aura for sponsoring today's video so yeah connecting to my body but then also i will say another really helpful tool has also been talking to friends and family being able to open up about how you're feeling being able to be vulnerable and again just have a conversation about whatever th whatever feelings you're experiencing is so therapeutic and so good for the soul because oftentimes the people in our lives our friends our families they know us from their point of view which does come with its own biases and projections don't get me wrong but they do typically see you from a different point of view than your romantic partner so i think it's really important in your healing journey to have conversations with friends and family about whatever negative things you feel maybe about yourself again whatever have have those tough conversations about what you're going through as you are healing from your breakup so that you can have that support system around you to again not only give you support Support as you sit with those negative feelings but to also again help you replace those negative core beliefs with more positive ones allow your friends and family to show you how lovable you are how amazing you are outside of a romantic connection because you are so much more than someone's girlfriend or boyfriend right you're also someone's friend you're also you're just your energy is received and loved by so many people so just open yourself up to a community is also just so so key and also being creative expressing yourself creatively for me that looks like making content having an online community of people where i can talk about my truth with is so incredibly healing as well and that might look totally different for you depending on how you express yourself maybe you create art maybe you make music maybe you do whatever right again being able to express those negative feelings that you're feeling in a way that other people can resonate with um, is also so good for the soul. So I'm in bed now. I finished cleaning. I honestly was cleaning until like 9 p.m. Um, and I staged my apartment. I spent a lot of time also just pausing and really reflecting again on the things that I feel like I'm learning. I love having days like this where I really just like focus specifically on healing. So I'm really glad that I got to bring you guys along with me. And I also finished listening to that talk that I was telling you guys about, which 
by the way i just feel like i resonated with that talk so much she talked about the sacred feminine and how in order for the collective to heal in order for the world essentially to heal and for us to create a world where less people are suffering physically emotionally and mentally we have to come back to our sacred feminine and that really just means learning to love ourselves unconditionally unconditionally and that's it's a journey right it's a process it takes time it's definitely not an overnight thing because again we live in a world where there is such an illusion of separateness we've been conditioned to really not love ourselves essentially and so i think again when we're thinking about healing from anything whether it be a breakup or again capitalist conditioning even just a loss of a friendship i feel like the goal, again, is to always come back to the fact that we are worthy of unconditional love and really just learning how to put into practice giving ourselves that love fully because we have access to that unconditional, like that blissful, euphoric, divine love. We have access to that literally at any time. And really at the end of the day, no matter what's going on in our lives, we are all on a journey of healing in some way. And that looks very different for everyone. Healing does not have to look a certain way. Also healing is not reserved for a specific time period or like era in your life. I think sometimes I see online, especially like on TikTok, this idea of like a healing era and it's like okay i'm in my healing era right now like i can't talk to anyone i can't go out i can't do things i see a lot of people kind of talk about this especially in reference to like dating and like getting over a relationship and while i can definitely agree that you know certain putting that into practice in some way maybe practicing celibacy maybe not drinking for a while maybe not smoking for a while like having discipline and putting focused effort into healing in certain areas is beneficial yes but i think the idea that healing one has to look a certain way is false but also the idea that you know healing again is reserved for the specific time period like this idea of a healing era is a bit silly you may have a period again where you are practicing certain things in order to help you heal but i think that we often hold on to this idea of what healing should look like and we get very strict and stern with ourselves and we feel like oh i can't have fun i can't go out i can't do things i can't you know i have to isolate myself i have to do all these things in order to really focus on myself and I really encourage you if you kind of find yourself falling into that trap to remember that everything in life is gives you a chance to really come back to yourself and learn to love yourself more wholly like for example for me honestly since I've gotten out of my relationship I pretty much immediately started dating and seeing other people because again just for me that's just what made sense that's where i was at i feel like my relationship was over again a long time before it ended i feel like i didn't experience a lot of passion and romance and emotion and all these things so to be able to experience that in a new way has actually given me a lot of room to learn a lot about myself everything in life that you do again whether it be dating whether it be you know spending time alone whether it be i don't know being in nature literally everything is an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself and so i encourage you to kind of recognize that again as you're on whatever healing journey you're on that you don't have to strip away life experiences for the sake of healing experiencing life playing in life doing the dance of life is how we learn to love ourselves more fully more wholly over and over again so i'm not saying if you just got a relationship to go out and date people if you're not ready you know do what's best for you um but i just think it's important to kind of remember that again your journey is your own you know what's best for you you know what you what you you know what your spirit what your body what your soul needs and what you feel called to do and what you don't feel called to do and again that applies to literally everything you may need some time away from work you may need some time away from friends you may need some time away from family sometimes you know how you're being called to learn to love yourself more and more trust your intuition and really more than anything learn how to trust yourself more and more every single day learning to come back to the present come back to yourself come back to the home which is yourself and your body and you will fall in love with yourself and be able to heal from any changes or whatever is going on in your life that is a little bit difficult. I know getting out of a relationship, again, no matter how long it was, can be very jarring and traumatic. And again, it's a very tough and long process to learn how to be on your own, especially if your breakup involves some heartbreak, which trust me, I've been there before. I've been in past relationships where I was very much heartbroken, um, you know, 
it's it's painful and it takes time to get over and it's really really hard but i just encourage you to remember that you are never alone you always have again home within yourself and you are all that you truly need whether you're dating someone or not you should always be making it a mission to come back to yourself to love yourself fully and again it's not an overnight journey but you are capable of doing it so i just hope wherever you are right now you're being patient with yourself you're being kind with yourself and you remember that you are loved that you are worthy of love always right and you're giving yourself the time that you need to heal so yeah i love you so much even if i don't know you and i hope you're doing amazing and i will be sure to see you in the next video bye